Mate, Dean Boxall, eh? We're doing How this. How good is this? We're doing this, mate. Look mate, at this. And you're wearing my shirt. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Hey, how, many, <laughs> how many people have one of those bad boys? But the one thing that I, I never, I wasn't a smart swimmer. Like I just got in and worked, but I never thought about the process. So when the competition came, then you'll get given this, this task or how to swim the 200 or how to swim the 100. And I should have been thinking about that in every single lap when I was training. And that's the regret of me as the athlete. I should have been doing that. And I ask that and I bestow that upon my athletes that they've got to be thinking, like you're not just coming to the pool and going up and down. That's not, that's not what we're doing. Every lap, there's a purpose. There's an objective. Get hold of it and learn it. But that's probably where people get missed, like where they have this different perception of, of what I am. Like they look at me as because I'm, I don't know, I'm out there, maybe I'm eccentric or whatever, but I don't, I don't do more kilometers. I don't do, I don't do uh, really more efforts. It, it's about accountability and where accountability is quite important. Accountability is taking responsibility for your purpose, your direction. Accountability is basically being relentless in your pursuit. And then accountability is being also adding resistance to that. So I'll test it. You're telling me that you want to be an Olympic champion or a national age champion. Well, I'm going to hold you accountable to that. Don't be a talker. I'm going to add resistance to that. I'm going to test it. And so we were cheering on. It was a massive moment for, for Swimming Australia and the coaches. And we were all watching. And it was Alex Bowman and it was Jacko. And they turned to me and they gave me this big hug when she, cra and when she cracked the four minutes. You know, it was something that we were pursuing. And then I looked at them and I said, guys, let me, let me get to Arnie at that ladder. And they said, go. So I ran down the pool and waited for Katie and Arnie to come out of the ladder. The ladder. This is an international meet. I'm waiting for Arnie to, at the ladder to embrace her and go, you've done it. And just to say, we're here. We're here now. We're here. Do you know us? I got on the bus and there was an Egyptian swimmer on the right hand side and there was Ray and Lily sitting next to each other and Lily's the best mate. She's on the Kelly Condor. She's the best competitor I've ever seen and a beautiful person. And I got on the bus, I'm in the Australian gear and I had my headset on like this, you know, headset and I walked up and I saw them and I clicked it off and I went to sit at the back, directly at the back of them, directly. There's seats everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> And I sat directly behind them and I turned off my headset. But Ray didn't even notice. They didn't notice that I was an Australian coach. They didn't know who I was. And I sat there and uh, Ray's talking. They're talking a bit about, um, you know, Simone's digging in and she's angry and she wants to get revenge. And then Lily was talking about a race and it was this beautiful chemistry between the two of them. And then Ray looked at Lily and gone, and I'm listening. I'm like right there going, um, did you see that young jackass? in the 200 free and I was like well, that's my swimmer and I was going to do like Shrek donkey in between the carrot and just go through and just stick my head through and go that jackass is my swimmer but I sat there and I just listened going out too fast and I used that for the next two years and I knew that it wasn't too fast she just was too hard the first 35 I knew that she's capable of going out in 55.5 and I knew she's capable of coming back in 57.5 I knew that <laughs> And that's what was needed. And I knew that because I was creator of that program. I knew that. So I was thinking, he thinks I'm a jackass. I'm the creator of that. And I was like, just used it. I just used it, you know. But he's great. Ray's great. And I didn't want her to think that she had made it because our dream was Tokyo. Mm. And I thought that, hang on a second. I've got a moment here. I've got a real big moment. If she thinks she's made it, we're in trouble. Katie will rip up. Uh, she won't sustain the next year. She'll get too social. She'll get uh, complacent. And I don't need that. So what I did was I saw her, congratulated her, gave her a hug, blah, blah, blah. I went to the splits. And then just this, this juggernaut of, of, of media and, and praise came towards Arnie. And she had to go and do this press conference. And I had a couple other swimmers to go and swim and warm up and blah, blah, blah. And I came back around and they all finished. I said, where's Arnie? And they go, she's at the press conference. 
I said, where is it? And they said, all right, I'll take you to the back of the pool, through there, through this corridor. I've gone through and I said, get me to the back. And I've walked in at the back and there's cameras and Arnie's sitting there by herself being interviewed. And I came in right behind the back of the camera and Arnie saw me and she just glowed. I looked at, looked at me and I just uttered, dog shit, dog shit, dog shit. And she looked at me and she just nodded to him. Like, I understand what you're doing. I understand it. You're trying to be Katie. Mm. Like, no, there's no cheap gold medals, but Katie has a different value. You know, like, we, we pursued that. And it was an honour. It was an honour to plan and to talk about it and to dream about it. Like, Katie, I, I thank you so much. Like, even if it didn't happen, I just thank you for allowing me to dream, allowing me to go home and have sleepless nights, to go home and to, 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 to think of Greg, to go home and to, uh, to, to try and create something that was going to try and be able to, 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 to beat you. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Man, it's incredible. How do you then go from where you've wanted to be to maintaining that type of level that Katie has been able to maintain for seven or eight years? Oh, another great question, Brett. Well, uh, maybe the philosophy is this. Um, hard times create strong people. Strong people create good times. Good times create weak people. Weak people create hard times. Where is Arnie situated now? Where is Molly situated now? Arnie maybe is now in the good times and I've got to make sure she's aware. So Arnie, if you're listening, if you're listening, you've got to be aware that you're heading into the good times, which creates weak people. You have got to be understanding of your situation. 